I'm gonna show you how to easily create trees in Blender. To do so, we'll be using an add-on that I created called Tree Machine, which before we get into this tutorial, I have to clarify is a paid add-on, but a link to it is in the description. So once you have it, download the treemachine.zip file as well as all the library files. They are packed as a multi-part 7-zip because of the five gigabyte file size limit. So just place all of the parts into the same folder and extract the treemachinelibrary.7z.001. On Windows and Mac, you'll have to install a program like 7-zip to be able to do so. With that done, go into Blender, install the add-on, and select the library file in the library file path. Then to spawn in a tree, just press Ctrl T for Ctrl Tree. Select the resolution you want up here, um, 1K, 2K, 4K, 8K, or max, which is 8K plus. Some textures I had more resolution than 8K, and I thought, it'd be a bit of a waste to just not use it, but I'll use 4K. And then just spawn the tree you want. And in theory, you're done. You could just use this tree as is, but we have a few settings that we can change to get even more out of the tree, get different variations and so on. So go to the modifier tab here and you'll see a bunch of settings. And they may look confusing at first, but they're actually pretty simple. So I'll explain them one by one. The first one, this branch direction bias object is just for you to be able to make the trees point in a certain direction. And so now if we add an empty object and select it in this branch direction bias object, we can move it around and the branches will point in its direction. Seed is pretty self-explanatory. So the next setting is preview mode and viewport. And this is here because the final tree is pretty slow to calculate. You can see even with preview mode turned on, it's lagging a little bit. With preview mode and viewport disabled, the trunk gets meshed nicely and with it on, we just have these tubes. The length is just the length of the tree. I would advise you to not change this too much. Small changes are okay, but if you change it too much, the tree kind of starts to break down. And that's why I created the small, medium, and large variations of each tree. The branch start is just where on the tree the branches start. So if you put this to 0.3, the branches start a lot lower. And if you put this to 0.7, the branches start a lot higher up. Branch length Again, I wouldn't change this a lot because I spent quite a lot of time dialing in the way these trees look. But if you want to, you can reduce the branch length if that's something that you want. <laughs> but this may again break the tree a little bit. Now an interesting setting, the branch circle resolution and branch resolution length. And now let's say I have a huge scene. I need a lot of trees and this resolution is too much because the camera is quite far away. You can just go in here and decrease the branch circle resolution to four, which the branch circle resolution is just the resolution of the profile of the branches, as well as decrease the branch resolution length. Branch resolution length just refers to the resolution along the length of the branch. So if you increase this number, the resolution will drop. And if you decrease this number, the resolution will increase. So if I set it to one, then the resolution drops. And if I set it to 0.2, the resolution increases. The next setting is just if you want the leaves enabled, so then you can just disable them. The leaf density is how dense you want the leaves to be. The next setting, realize leaves, is if you want the leaves to be instances or if you want them to be real, so part of the mesh. The reason this is checked by default is you need them to be realized to instance the trees on another object. Also, if you enable the wind checkbox, then it will automatically overwrite the realized leaves checkbox because we need realized leaves for the wind. Now, delete roots below is not necessary to change, but the roots actually extend below what we can see here. So if I put this lower, you can see, <laughs> some roots, but they don't look very good and they can sometimes interfere with the scene you're creating. Now, trunk resolution increase is only going to be visible with either preview mode in viewport disabled or in the final render. This is for the next setting, which is display spark. So if you want the bark to actually displace the mesh, you probably want an increased resolution in the trunk to get all that detail. And this is what this is for. At zero, it's just the default resolution. At one, it's a little higher, two, three, and four is pretty much the maximum I do, but that does get pretty heavy. And of course, I already mentioned it, displace bark is if you want the bark to actually displace. Now, the trunk radius is another one you don't really need to change. You can make the tree thicker or thinner. Again, this is something that can break the tree if you 
like you just saw if you go up and down too much. Now wind, I mentioned it, it's just if you want wind. Now the next setting, leaf wind strength, is the strength of the wind in the leaves only. And this is maybe a little bit misleading because a lot what makes it seem like the wind is strong is the speed that the leaves are swaying at and not how hard they are swaying. Although that does play a bit of a role. So if you want the wind to be stronger, increase the leaf wind speed first and maybe then play with the leaf wind strength. But if you wanted it to be more calm, I would definitely reduce both. Anyway, the next settings are the sway wind strength and sway wind speed. And these are just for the sway of the tree in the wind. If you want to make it calmer, I would just decrease both. And if you want to make it stronger, I would just increase both. But of course you can experiment and get more advanced with it. But the defaults are fine. And anytime there is this advanced in front of a setting, you can just ignore it. That's just for me to dial in the different size variations of the tree. Now there is one more setting that's going to be interesting. And this setting is only available in the birch tree setup, but I plan to add it to the other trees as well in the future. And this is the season randomness and season sliders. So if you wanted to make an autumn scene, for example, or a scene that's on the edge of autumn, uh, then you may want to change the season that the tree is in. And to show you this, I have to go into render mode. Here we are. And let me just decrease the season randomness to zero for now and increase the season slider to one. You can see we're in autumn. Now, if we put the season to zero again and increase the season randomness to one, you may see that nothing changes. And this is because the season randomness is for if you have a forest of these trees. So it changes the season per tree, which sometimes is a look that can happen in real life. So if I duplicate this, you can see we have a different season. The season randomness is stronger than the season slider. So if you have season randomness at one, it will always use a random season and not the one you set. So if you want to change the season, you have to change the season randomness to zero, if that makes sense. And I want to add this to all the other leaf trees. I forgot the scientific name. But. Oh, and before I forget, if you see these black spots, you will have to increase the transparent light bounces for them to go away. I usually just set it to 16. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This is how you can use Tree Machine and easily create trees in Blender. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, subscribe. Thanks for watching.